Nice, nice. Yeah, we're back. Uh, actually, uh, it depends on the, the habit of the surgeon. Some surgeons like to start with FEMA. Some surgeons like to start with tibia. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, professional surgeons. So thank you very much for your time. I'm going to give you an introduction about how we use our instruments and implants. So first, we mark the tibial cubicle and the patella before the surgery. And then we will make an incision from just medial to the tibial cubicle and try to get up to the mid portion of the quad tendon, slice it open. I see a video from the U.S. that they prefer the torn pressure is at 275. And incise the medial meniscus, and it will do a medial release. Please place the knee in flexion and the external rotation to keep the tension off the patella ligament insertion. We go ahead and divide the ACL now. That helps the tibia slide forward a bit like this. Yeah, we, we got to make the tibia slide forward a bit. Then we're going to do the tibial resection. Like I said, I personally prefer to do the tibial first. So retractors may be placed medially, laterally, and posteriorly. We expose the tibial We do the proximal tibial cut uh, with our extra medullary instrumentation. Yeah, it's a symbol. Symbol of all those components. Yeah, we assemble the whole set for the first material cut. Okay. So with the knee flex, that we uh, place the arm of the ankle clamp around the distal tibia. Yeah. Get it parallel to the tibial crest. Yeah, right here. Yeah. So this cutting guide is adjustable in all three planes. Okay. Uh, this plane, this plane, and the uh, uh, valgus, and the different heights. You can turn this, the locker, okay, to change the height. In corona plane, in this plane, when I look at the front, this angle, we just align the proximal guide, align this guide with the medial third of the tibial cuticle and align the distal guide with the center of the angle right here. So, yeah, proximal side, distal side, we choose the proper alignment. Okay. And from the latter aspect, when I look from this side, okay, this rod, okay, this rod should parallel with the anatomical axis of the front. So this line and this line should be parallel. You noted that our tibial liner, the implants, yeah, our tibial liner, it has three degrees of building slope. It means it's, it's not flat. It's not flat. It has three degrees of, of uh, slope built in the design, building the shape. So, for example, if we determined that this patient, his slope was three degrees, you know, before the surgery, okay, we do the x-ray examination, we found his slope was three degrees. So, we just use uh, our tibial bearing. But if you find, uh, for example, his slope is seven degrees, that means we need to add, a, add four degrees to the resection. Okay. I need to show you this part. I'll show you this, this mark. If it's zero, it means it's uh, just a parallel to the anatomical axis. If we, like I said, if this patient is slope is three degrees, you just to choose zero. Okay. If his slope is seven degrees, for example, okay, we need to choose four. Because four plus three, three building slope here. That was sum to 70. Okay. So 
that will reproduce its normal tibial slope. Then the last step, let's determine the height of the cutting block. Yeah, for example, should be this high or this high. It can be determined by the stylus. Uh, before that, we need to make a screw here. Insert a bait. Okay. Now we have to determine the height. When referencing the deepest portion of the medial condom, what we use this stylus. To make sure you need to press this to the end. You gotta press it, press this. You gotta make sure it's fully seated. Otherwise, you will get the wrong height. Yeah. You gotta press here. Press here to make sure it's fully seated. When you choose a medial condom, when you reference the medial condom, you choose two. Okay, let's see you. I can show you. Two here. Here's 10. If you choose the medial condom as your reference point, the deepest portion, okay, you set the stylus at two millimeter as the depth of the cut. If you choose a lateral condom, for example, you choose here, you need to use a 10 to determine its height. Of course, you have to choose the unaffected panda as reference. W without a defect, choose that side as reference. Then the height of the cutting block is determined. Then we fix it. Yeah, we just uh, fix the block. Now we got to check the cut depth with the filler gauge. And do this. We just to see with our eyes to see if it's okay. It seems all right. Because we want to cut as less as possible. Bone conservation. If it, everything's all right, we'll go ahead and do our proximal tibial cut. We just uh, remove other parts, only leave the cutting block in place. Oh, no, that's very good. After this short part, I will have you raise some questions. Yeah, so we just do our first cut. It's a sawbone imported from US. Why not Chinese sawbones? Uh, because that's better. <laughs> that feels better. A little bit higher quality than Chinese uh, local bones. <laughs> It's uh, around 100 US dollars a set, the fake bone. Before making the cut, we need to retract the medial collateral ligament to protect it. Then we walk across the tibia. Yeah, if you find uh, there is a, a little fur, you gotta remove them, either file or recut to make sure you got a smooth surface. Good. Now it's better. So our previous step is to determine the position of this one. So our previous work is to determine the angle of this one. Because it can be either higher or lower. It can be, you know, internally or externally. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, posteriorly, slow or different. Okay. So we use the complete set to determine its angle. Okay. That's the first cut for tibia. Let's move on to do the femur, to do the first cut for femur. Also, the same, we need to cut the first uh, horizontal cut of the femur. 
So what we are going to do is to make this cut. That is the first cut. Then we have four cuts. Here, one, two, the chamfer cut. And then one, two, the chamfer cut. We get four cuts. So totally, we're going to make five cuts. So first cut, let's do it. Uh, anyway, in conclusion, we're going to determine the position of this block. If the position of this cutting block can be determined, then we just uh, go ahead and cut it. So how should we position this one? This way or this way? Or this way? Or higher or lower? So we need our the complete set to determine. Now we're going to use our intramedullary instruments to do the distal femur cut. We use a step drill to penetrate the femur canal, use it as a device to determine its position. But I would like to remind you that the diameter of this step drill at the front is eight millimeter. At the rear is 10 millimeter. Different diameter, here is a bigger hole. You know, for other manufacturers, maybe the diameter from the front and the rear are the same. So when they drill into the bone to make the opening larger, they will rotate like this. Okay, to make the, the opening entry point larger. But with our instruments, you don't have to do that. You just uh, keep drilling because at the start, it's eight millimeter, smaller hole. But when you reach this here, you make a bigger hole. So you, you don't have to do this. So let's do it. So where is the entry location? We just uh, placed the uh, canal entry location uh, one centimeter above the insertion of the PCL. The insertion of the PCL is here. We choose one centimeter above it. And it's slightly medial in an intercondylar notch. Okay, this place is where we choose the uh, entry location. So let's do it. Yeah, you don't have to rotate. Just to keep drilling. Yeah, now we have to insert this iron rod. Yeah, this is very good. Okay, so you got to make sure it's fully seated. Okay, if you if you just insert here and it you cannot advance, there is a problem. You need to make sure it's fully inserted into the canal. That means you find a proper position. Then you assemble the iron rod and then this the resection guide. Yeah, we're gonna assemble these parts. Okay, before that, I would like to show you that we have this instrument. We can turn it not only with this velgas angle. You can see, see here. here. Okay. You can turn it. You can turn a, the velgas angle. And also you can turn the depth. See here, please. You can turn the depth. See? Here. Okay. You change it. That's the symbol I'm rot in this section guide. Insert it through the central hole. Yeah. So we're gonna introduce the iron rod to the femoral canal again. Uh, just a second. You gotta make sure that the feet of this structure rest flush with the distal femur. Rest flush. Okay, you gotta make sure full contact. And we assemble the cutting block. Like I said, this distal cutting guide is adjustable not only in its velvet angle, but also in its depth. Okay, just to press and turn a dial. Okay. So if we have determined off the preoperative films that this patient his femoral anatomic angle is six. So we just choose six here. 
This is a valgus angle six. And for the depth, the standard distal resection is nine millimeter. By turning this, yeah, by turning here, we are changing the, the cutting level. The standard resection is nine millimeter. So we set it at nine. Nine. Why is nine? Because that just matches the distal thickness of our SK1 implant. Okay, because their thickness. Because this is a final implant, okay? The thickness is nine. Okay, that's why we choose nine here to cut nine. So we are resting on the condos and uh, we paint the cutting guide in place. Okay, so then we remove the adjustable guide, iron rod, and uh, et cetera, just to leave in a cutting block in place. Before that, we would like to see with our eyes if the resection is good. Okay, it's a standard cutting is a, is a upper slot, use this slot, okay. It seems good, yeah. So we just uh, remove other parts, only leave the cutting block. Not only the straight paint are needed, we need an oblique paint to make sure it doesn't move. The three paints are not. Now we can do our first cut for femur, a flat cut. Mm -hmm. Great, we just finished our first femoral cut. Wow, so many powder. Okay. I gotta remind you that we just used this cutting block to do the femoral cutting. And you can see there are two slots. This slot is standard cut. Okay. This slot is plus three millimeter cut. Uh, i use this one. Zero and a plus three. So the zero cutting slot will resect the nine millimeter. If additional distal resection is required, for example, you need additional three millimeter, you just use this slot, okay? This slot will resect at 12 millimeter. If additional resection is required beyond the plus three millimeter slot, you just uh, use these pain holes. For example, you can remove from the, the central hole. In the first place, we were using the zero. You can remove and we just, uh, reposition the cutting block to make the pain go through the plus two holes. That means you have additional two millimeter cut because we are moving, moving down. Okay, we just leave the pins in place. We just change the, the hole of the cutting block. Then you got more resection. Now we just, uh, Check the valgus angle and alignment with the alignment handle and rod. Yeah. yeah. We, we use this, when this was in place, we can use our alignment rod to, ch to check the alignment. This, okay. You have to make sure 
it points to the femoral head. Okay, it means the proper position. <laughs> now we think we did the first cut very well, and we'll go ahead and do our four in one cut. Uh, yeah, before that, before doing another four cuts, the chamfer cut, the vertical cut, before that, we can assess the extension gap. Okay, extension gap assessment. So, yeah, you can see. Yeah, we, we don't want it to be too tight. It cannot be too loose either. So it seems good. This is our gap analyzer. If you use SK1 implant, if you find this gap is very well, you can choose 8 millimeter tibial bearing. Okay, this is for SK2. You can ignore that. For example, this 8 millimeter, this gap is too loose. For example, we need a thicker one. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you found this is better. Okay, the thickness is very good. Then you just choose 10 millimeter bearing for SK1 implants. This is the first cut for femur. Let's do the four in one resection. Okay, like I said, we're gonna do the cut for the next four cuts. We're gonna make this cut, one, two, the chamfer cut, and chamfer cut, and this cut, four cuts. Let's do it. We gotta remove the thing first. We just place the adjustable AP sizer yeah. Here. We put it flat against the resected distal surface. Okay, this surface is flat. We just resect it. Make it flat against it. With the feet here, here. With the feet, you gotta make sure that the feet is resting on bone. Okay, in contact with posterior condyle of the femur. Feet here. Make sure you got a proper position. And normally we expose uh, the cortex uh, distally and anteriorly. So I'm absolutely certain that the foot piece is resting on bone. That ensures that I will put the smallest available femoral components to avoid overstuffing the patellofemoral joints. We're trying to find the smallest, as small as we can to, to save more bone. The bigger, you will have issue. But you just place the stylus on the, the here, the stylus here. Place it on the anterior femur, anterior femur, at a point, yeah, you gotta find a point here. This point, is where your saw blade will exit. Yeah, for example, this point, this point, it means later the saw blade will go through here, okay? Finally, it will go through here. After this cut, we want to make sure there is no notch. We want to avoid the femoral notch or overstuffing the patellofemoral joint. Now, the femoral component size, the final implant, can now be read from the central scale from here. From here, I'll show you. Okay. In this case, we choose five. Five is uh, the proper size here. Because when you determine this point, then you can read from here is five. Finally, we will choose size five femoral components. Remember that size. We need to drill to a hole here. This is a positioning hole. We'll use it later. Okay. 
So we just got two holes here. We will use a hole to position our 0.1 cutting block. Yeah, here. Because like I said, we just determined the size is five. The final component, the final implant will be five, size five. So we also choose a size five, 0.1 cutting block. Yeah, we just use uh, the two pillar, insert the hole we just made. Yeah, you need to use uh, use this to make sure it's heated in place. Okay, yeah, it's fully seated. So we just chose uh, the slotted ephemeral AP 4 in 1 cutting block, this one. That matches the selected size on AP size. Okay, we just place it into the holes. Here, can you see it? We gotta make sure you set this screw at a zero position. If you're uncertain about a position, you can use a filler gauge. Yeah. Yeah, you can see with your eyes to see if this is a proper cut. Here and also the posterior part. Okay. And you, you find it seems all right. You can do it. The filler gauge just to show you how much bone you will remove after the, the cut. Okay. Just to make sure there are not going to be any notch. Okay, because the notch could be catastrophic in osteoporotic bone. For example, if your filler blade indicates that there will be a possibility of the notching, then you have to adjust the cutting block, okay? How to adjust it? You can make it anteriorly, one millimeter. That will make sure you will remove less bone to avoid notch. Okay, how to do that? We use... Here, like I said, at the start, uh, I remind you to set it at zero. But now, because we need to move the cutting block anteriorly one millimeter, okay, so we just turn to one plus one. If you need two, I turn to plus two. You see it? Yeah, when you turn it, you see the gap? You see the gap is moving. The gap is different, okay? We turn and see the gap is uh, smaller. The gap is larger. Yeah, you can see that. In this way, we can move the cutting block anteriorly to avoid the notch. Yeah. So now, yeah, I'm sure about the, the position is very well, so I can insert some pins. Okay, we just uh, painted the oblique pins to make the cutting block in place. So the block position is satisfactory. Okay, so we just uh, uh, we can make the cuts, the four cuts. Of course, you have to protect. You have to protect the victims. 
Amper. Yeah. So the posterior bone, posterior chamfer, then the anterior bone, anterior chamfer. Yeah, it seems all right. There is no notch. Perfect. Now we just finish our five cups for femoral. Okay. Then we remove the cutting block. So we did one cut in the tibia, five cuts in the femoral. Now after that, we're gonna do a gap assessment. And to see if the gap is all right. Yeah, we use our modular spacer block system. Well, we just evaluated the extension gap. The extension gap is all right. We can do it again. Now we're going to check the, the flexion gap. The modular surface of the, the spacer block is magnetic. It comes in two millimeter increments. The two millimeter increment just correlates with the thickness of our implant liner. Because our implant liner is in two millimeter increments. So we have the knee in about 90 degrees of flexion. Now I want to check the stability. Yeah, it looks it looks very good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I want to make sure that there is a little bit of a play here. I don't want it to be so tight that the ligaments are so intense and nothing will move. That, that is no good. So just by feel, this seems about right. After that, we would like to, to check the alignment to see if it's all right. With this spacer block in place, we can check. You start the alignment rod, yeah, just to check. Yeah. And it seems all right. At the distal point, it goes through the center of the ankle. Yeah, and the proximal part, it points to the femoral here. Okay, it seems all right. We need to do the PS box, okay? We just made make a five cuts for femoral. Now we need to do the intercondylar box. So you just impact the size specific box for section guide. This is a box for section guide, okay? On a prepared distal femur. Mm -hmm. Secure the box for section guide. First, we need to. Now we want to secure the box for section guide with the drill pins. Yeah. 
This is oblique paint. Yeah, two oblique paints. And it's a little bit curved. Yeah. Now we face it. Sir, ye This is a box protection meal guy. Yeah, it's his art. Can I have some some We're going to use this primer to do the interfamilar the box, okay? There's the axle here. Axle with three holes posteriorly and then we will apply a mill here into each of these three holes. Yeah. First, we will start from the center, then this one, and this one, okay. We're gonna rotate, drill here, and then rotating this way to remove the intercommoner bone, okay. Yeah. So when you do the, the lateral, when you drill the lateral side, you got to make sure the reamer is in full contact with the, the lateral side of the guide. Okay. That will make sure you get a proper hundred box. <laughs> Particles bone, genseless bone. He did not in a drill over, he gives the friction you as a dog, the other friction that you cut out there. Job side you don't cut those which you can never fix it. You put my job friction you would have. Friction? Friction. 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 I will say in a jetty on the boot that was a portico bone of those. I think it's the RPM chain. I'm not going to get it. 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 I'm so you got to make sure the reamer tip is fully seated in a PS box mill. Sean, can we use, can, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, can, I have a question. Can we use a saw to create this uh, box? Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. That will be quicker, but... So in this what, way, what, what is the difference? What, 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 why you are doing with the... With the uh, with this drill bit. Yeah. Why you are uh, yeah. The very reason we're doing it this way is because you see the first time, the second time. This way we can make a round corner here. See okay. round corner here. Yeah, not the straight corner. It will make sure the structure is stronger. Okay, stronger than the straight corner. The first that you reserve more bone. And it's stronger. Yeah. And Actually, you mean that it, it will make a stronger corners that, that for the implant. Okay. Correct. Correct. It makes the bone, the, the lead of the bone stronger. The bone can sustain more force. Okay. Uh, actually, this is a, the technique for our SK1 implant. We also have SK2 implant. SK2 implant, we just use that way. Okay. We just use a chisel. Just use a chisel to, to do it like this. Yeah. yeah, but we think this is better because it leaves a round corner here. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We got it. We got it. Uh, I have another question. Uh, it is not related to the the uh, uh, the procedure, but we want to know the difference between the SK one and SK two. Uh, SK two. Uh, I can show you. So what are, what is the technique difference? Yeah, this is SK one. SK2, actually, the condyle is exactly the same. 
And uh, the surface of the tibia bearing, the bearing, the surface is the mm -hmm. same. But here, the locking mechanism is different. Okay. okay. The SK2 is uh, it's like the, the tail of the swallow, like the tail of the bird. Okay. The locking mechanism is different here, just the backside. And okay. more important is SK2, it can add stem here, add a stem. Sometimes, you know, there will be a bone defect in tibia. Some patients, they have bone defect in tibia. So they need to use augment and uh, along with uh, the stand here. Okay? Okay, okay. Yeah. For other brands, for other manufacturer, if you have to use a stand and an augment, you need to go to the revision knee, revision implant. The revision implant, you have to remove more bone and the implant is uh, much more expensive. Okay. Higher price. But with our SK2 implants, you don't have to use revision implants, okay? You just remove very less bone, but you can add stem and other here. Yeah, and the implant okay. is cheaper. Yeah, that's an advantage. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's, uh, uh, we are very proud of that because not many manufacturers offer that. Yeah, and it's our very good product, SK2. Okay, good. Then we go back to the tibia. And I do the keel. Check alignment is lost. Yeah. Now we have to choose uh, choose a proper the tibial base plate to to make the best coverage of the tibia. Slightly external rotation is preferred. Because internal rotation, it will be very bad for the patellofemoral tracking, okay? Slightly external forward. External rotation is better. You need to find the best of coverage, okay? It cannot be too big or too small. Yeah, we, we want to make this align with the medial third of the tibial tubicle, okay? Then you got a proper rotation. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we find the TBO base plate that provides the best of TBO coverage, both AP and ML. Make sure there is a Expose the posterior medial bone. Make sure it's slightly external. Yeah. Yeah. So you just try the size five. It seems very well. It provides a very good coverage. Then we are gonna do the tibial stem preparation. Okay, it's almost finished. We just the pain is placed in place and uh, with the with the pins and uh, we'll apply the tower here. Use a guide to, uh, to guide our punch. This is a starter reamer. Uh, we provide an initial hole in the media. The starter reamer should be fully engaged in a punch guide. Okay. Then just to provide the, the initial hole. Now drive the, the punch into the guide. Drive it into the media until it fully seated. Uh, you got to make sure it's, uh, it reaches uh, the end, okay, fully seated. So we, we just uh, finished the R cut and uh, the tibial Q uh, preparation. Now we just uh, do the trial reduction, okay? We just leave this plate in place and uh, choose uh, the proper trial. Now this is a trial, tibial trial. 
to place the Shah Berry and Kandal, the Shah Kandal, and you select the five, size five. And actually, you have to apply the Kandal first. Yes, sir. Yeah, actually, you're using this. Okay. Yeah, just to perform the short reduction. To see if it's all right. Yeah. Velvet angle and the extension flexion. Yeah. When it seems all right. Yeah, this is a good position. Yeah, it's almost the finish. Then after that, we just, uh, you know, open the, unpack the, the steroid implants and apply with the bone cement.